It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears Now. Thanks to everybody who submitted their questions using hashtag Bears. If you want to get on our next mailbag video, use hashtag Bears and ask me any question you want down in the comments section. Let's go ahead and get this kicked off with Joel Fernandez asking, if we sign Antonio Brown, then could we trade another one of our wide receivers? Should we trade another one of our wide receivers? Um, well, let's focus on the A-B aspect of this first, on whether or not this should even be a consideration for the Bears. Uh, Brown continues to work out with NFL players, as you guys have probably seen on social media. Here's the deal. He's likely facing a suspension from the National Football League if he returns. He still has impending legal issues off the field. Should the Bears be interested, he would be a great player for this offense if his head screwed on straight. No one's disputing that. There was a time not too long ago that A.B. was the best receiver in the NFL. Not top five, top, not top ten. At one point, he was the best, and that was not that long ago. I still think... If, you know, assuming he's healthy, he's a top 10 receiver in the National Football League. You put him on the opposite side of Allen Robinson with Anthony Miller manning the slot, that all of a sudden becomes one of the best wide receiver cores in the NFL. It would be the best receiving core the Bears have had in quite some time. I'm intrigued by it. I would explore and kind of see where he's at with things. Uh, now, if you brought him in, who would you cut? Probably just Ted Ginn, right? Like, you, you don't want to cut one of your other young guys like Javon Wims or Riley Ridley. Maybe you cut or trade Cordero Patterson, but he can do some you know special teams th things for you as well. I'm intrigued by A.B. Don't really trust him. Non-guaranteed deal? I have no problem exploring that option if I'm the Chicago Bears. Should the Bears sign Antonio Brown? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you want AB in Chicago for 2020? Xavier Thomas next up here on our Bears mailbag. Does Nick Foles or Trubisky have enough weapons to succeed? The answer is yes. It comes down to the offensive line at the end of the day for the Chicago Bears. Like, you got enough playmakers. I like David Montgomery and Tariq Cohen coming out of the backfield. I think Allen Robinson has proven to be a number one receiver for the Chicago Bears. I don't see why there's any reason why, uh, you know, whoever plays quarterback, assuming the offensive line is better, can't give you enough playmaking ability this season. Like, it's not like this group is just thin at receiver and doesn't have any playmakers at all, I think there's enough there. And while the tight end position isn't great, it's much improved from last year. Jimmy Graham and Cole Komet alone are five times what this Bears offense had at tight end last year. Like, that in itself is a major upgrade. I mentioned the running backs. I mentioned the receivers. Like, I think whoever plays quarterback, if the offensive line holds up, there's no excuses. Like, you got to deliver and play at a high enough level. You don't have to be awesome, but you can't be forcing, you know, too, you're having too many turnovers, forcing the ball into bad plays. Like, you got to be able to make some plays. The Bears have enough weapons on offense to do that in 2020. All right, Bears fans, please help me out and share this video on social media. Let's spread the word, continue to grow this channel and grow this video in particular. If you have Twitter, very easy way to do it. You click the share button, which is right under the video. Click the Twitter icon, click tweet. Does it for you, takes about 10 seconds. If you're on Facebook or if you want to do it on Facebook as well, same process. Share button, Facebook icon, click post to Facebook. Takes about five, 10 seconds each, and it shares the video. You know, it gets rolling on the internet and more Bears fans can find it, find our channel, find our videos, help us grow here at Chicago Bears Now. So share the video. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it from you guys. Conrad Madison asks, is Mitchell Trubisky at a higher advantage to win the starting quarterback job with only two preseason games? Well, there may end up being no preseason games. And if that's the case, I think there's a very good chance that Trubisky is the starter. And even with two preseason games, look, the less on-field stuff, the better. Because the Bears coaching staff has maintained that, you know, until they get on the practice field, we're not starting a competition on Zoom. Like, that is that is not going to be the route here. Now, this is, you know, kind of the current outline for what preseason looks like, assuming this holds up. Teams report late in July. Preseason week one games, August 20th through the 24th. The second games the week after. And then the season gets going September 10th with the Bears playing just a few days later. 
I think it could be advantage Trubisky if the preseason gets reduced, which it already has, or completely wiped out. I think if there's a lot of reps to go around that Nick Foles will be the starter, but the less reps means the Bears might just stick with their current starter because he has more reps in this offense, and that is just the way that those type of things go. So we will see what happens. Obviously, if Trubisky does play, he has to play a lot better this year um, than he did last year. We saw the flashes in 2018. We saw regression in 2019. If he gets an opportunity to play, can he be better in 2020? Obviously, we're going to find out in this season. Who will be the week one starter? If you think it's Trubisky type 10, if you think it's going to be Nick Foles type 9, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. All right, guys, I hope you're staying safe and we all want football. So if you need a face mask or if you want to upgrade to high quality and Bears ones, we got you covered. We got the two packs, got the three packs. They even got these new four packs, lots of cool designs as well. I know the single face masks ship very, very quickly. So if you just want to get one as fast as possible, this one's probably the way to go. But if you want better bang for your buck, get the three pack, get the four pack. It's four for $29.99. So if you want to hook your family up as well, that's probably the way to go. Chatsports.com slash Bears Masks. We all want football. The best, we can all do our part, right? Just wear a face mask and get yourself a new one right there at Chatsports.com slash Bears Masks. All right, Kyle Steele is next up here. Who has the best chance at being comeback player of the year on the Bears? Nick Foles, Akeem Hicks, or someone else? I know we got another question as well, similar to this, so I'll go ahead and tie this one in as well from Sleeping Boy. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. Do you think Akeem Hicks can be a candidate for comeback player of the year? So both of you guys asked about Hicks. Uh, the other guy also asked about Nick Foles as well, so we'll talk about both of those players in particular. Obviously, when you only play in four games and you go 0-4 and, and miss like 10 games with a broken call, Bone. Sure, you're a candidate to be Comeback Player of the Year. I think I saw some Vegas odds a couple of months ago that Nick Foles had like the ninth best odds to win Comeback Player of the Year. Remember, there's players like Ben Roethlisberger who are going to be in the mix. Uh, you know, Matt Stafford, other quarterbacks who were hurt last year that will, you know, be tough to beat in that regard as well. Akeem Hicks only played in five games last season, so you know, he's going to have to have a monster season to win that award because he's a defensive tackle. Like, he's going to have like have to have like 12, 13 sacks and be a major reason why the Bears win the NFC North or something like that. He's going to win this award. We know how this goes, guys. Major awards that quarterbacks can be up for, they typically win them. That's just how things work at the NFL. So who has the better chance at comeback player of the year? If you think it's Foles type F, I think it's Akeem Hicks type H. I think by positional nature, it's got to be Nick Foles, and that's why I'm typing my F in the comments section. If you like what we do here and you haven't already subscribed, hey, I don't know why, or maybe you don't know how to, just hit the big red subscribe button. It's right under the video. And if for some reason you can't find it, just plug in that link, youtube.com slash bears now. The sub link will be right in the middle of your screen. Makes it easy. Share that link with a friend. Let's continue to grow here on the channel. We're putting up Bears videos almost every single day. Calvin Dyer is next up. How many missed field goals for Eddie Pinero this season? Well, I don't want to be negative, Calvin, but uh, I, you know, I will answer this question with how the hell am I supposed to know, right? Like kickers are super unpredictable, and I don't know what his exact numbers will be. Last year, pretty solid, 23 of 28, like 82%. Uh, this past year, missed a couple of extra points, which isn't great. He was about league average, 82% about league average. I think he was tied for like 17th in the NFL in field goal percentage, so middle of the pack. That's certainly a lot better than what Cody Parkey was uh, a couple of years ago when he single-handedly was the reason the Bears did not advance in the playoffs. Now, Eddie Bonero is not one of these guys. He's not a Justin Tucker. Lambo had a good year last year. He's not a Dan Bailey, Crosby. Like, these guys are established kickers in the NFL. Bonero's just looking to build off what was a pretty solid 2018. Can you get 85%? I think if you can, that's something you will live with moving forward. But I do expect him to be the kicker this year. Just be solid overall. Do you trust Eddie Pinero? Type 1 for yes. Type 2 for no. Outside of that midseason slump where he missed like three of his five uh, misses for the whole season, like in two games, he was pretty good last year. I think overall, I feel pretty good about him for the Bears kicker. Altruistic Angel, my question is, can we go back in time and draft Pat Mahomes? Uh, if only, right? Uh, the guy just got half a billion dollar contract and uh, he's expected to lead the Chiefs uh, to a lot more, uh, you know, playoff and, you know, potentially Super Bowl runs as well. Look, obviously 2017 hurts, right? 
not only do you trade up from Mitchell Trubisky, which was questionable to say the least, but two of the current, what, top six or seven quarterbacks, including the best quarterback, went after Trubisky? That's a tough pill to swallow. I mean, obviously, look, no one knew Mahomes was going to be this good. Deshaun Watson had some injury concerns. You never know how things are going to play out. Trading up for Trubisky, though, felt questionable at the time and obviously has proven to be true. And when you look at Mahomes' early resume, it makes it even tougher. He's an MVP. He's a Super Bowl champion. He's a Super Bowl MVP. All-pro, two-time Pro Bowler, and he just signed the first half-billion-dollar contract in, super, er, in sports history. <laughs> I guess as spin zone, uh, Bears saved themselves half a billion dollars? Yes, no, uh, don't think that's really how it works. I think Mahomes makes Kansas City a lot of money and obviously brings them a lot of success. If only this could happen, all we can hope for is that the Bears play better in 2020.